Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and a lovely hello and welcome to those of you that have joined us in the last couple of months. It is the 1st of December which means it is time for a monthly roundup and that means you get to see everything I've done over November. As ever you can find me over on Instagram at the House of Langford and at Overall Sews. I'm also on Ravelry at Mad X Stitcher. Now before we get going you may have noticed that the angle is slightly different this month because I wanted to show off these beautiful flowers that my husband and my son bought me. They're gorgeous. They've lasted over a week now. I'm so happy with them. They're so pretty. So I've had a little bit of a tidy up behind me because um, it's getting a little bit messy. Although to be fair, it is on a printer because there's not a lot of space in my flat. Um, but I have tried to make it a little bit prettier especially with the festive season coming up. So, it's almost Christmas. So, yes, I have not necessarily made an awful lot of different things this month. I have been in isolation with my son now for a week because he tested positive for COVID on the 22nd of November. So we've had a lovely week together. <laughs> and that means that I have been making plenty of masks. So. Let's show you just what I've been getting up to, shall we? So I have made two different styles of masks this month. The first one is the main one I make quite a lot of, which is this long rectangle one with the two pieces that flap up either side. Show you that on the other side. There we go. So I have made some Christmassy ones. This one has got this really pretty Christmas present fabric and it actually looks like it's upside down but all the presents go in all different directions so it could be worn any way up which is quite nice and they all have this little element of gold I'm not sure if you can see it yes so I've made four of these for me one in each of the different fabrics I have so I've got Christmas presents I've got some cheery Santa Claus there you can see the gold on that one little stars I have some holly berries and then I have some really pretty little robins now these fabrics have been in my stash for I don't know how many years to be honest and I thought I'd just dig them out and make some things for Christmas so I've made the four for me I also made another one of the holly berry for my dad in this style and I'll pop up some pictures I'm gonna go this way this time i'll pop up some pictures and um, to show you the other style that i've done because i don't have them with me um i have made let's just check my notes i have made three four five six seven of the other style and i have made in total 21 of this style so i've made some holly ones some robin ones some santa claus ones and They've all gone off now to their new owners so i'm hoping that they like them so whilst i had the sewing machine out a friend of mine had also given me um some masks that she'd already pre-cut they'd all be already been interfaced and they just needed sewing up and again these are christmasy too so i've got four i've sewn up four christmasy masks for my friend and you can see they've got these reindeer and these christmas trees on them and again they're gold and i think they look rather smart so once I'm allowed out of isolation, these will be going off to my friend as well. Now, not all the masks I've made this month have been Christmassy. I've made some for work as well. I made five that were in just general colours, really. There was a red one, a blue one, a yellow one, and a grey one. And I made another one for me, but I can't remember what it was, but I'll pop a picture up because I've got pictures. And... At the same time, I was asked by someone at work to make some for them as well. So I have some black and white ones. Okay, so I have two that have been made up with an Ikea, an old Ikea fabric. So we've got this really interesting pattern. It just looks like leaves, which I think is really cool. And then I've just done the back in as um, black with some white polka dots. Whoop, I've just dropped one. So they look really nice and smart for work. And the other one that she asked me to do was this one which is mostly white, but it's got this really br nice black filigree style pattern on it. So I hope she likes those too. Now, all of these ones that I've shown you are made with two different um, patterns. The first one 
which is this one is the sew me something that tutorial that i followed um which is by jules and that is linked over in my tried and tested sewing playlist i'll put the link up top for you and the other one is just a, what i call a standard mask really um it's a nice shape to the front of it and that i use a tutorial which is by claire at beautiful things and I believe that's over on her website if you purchase a mask kit <laughs> so head on over there if you'd like to make either of those two Now, prior to becoming in isolation, um, I did manage to get two other pieces made up and sent off to a friend as part of a swap. So I join in monthly swaps over at Pass the Parcel on Facebook and we're all just little creatives really. We all get together and send each other little gifts through the app of Elfster. And what it does is it automatically generates who you're going to send to that month, which is really cool. So I have made two items I made some bunting and I made a drawstring bag now the drawstring bag is going to be a tutorial I did film it as I made it I just need to make another one and do a little intro for it and that will be on the channel soon but I've run out of fabric so I can't, I've got to wait until I get out of isolation to get some more now for anyone who is an Animal Crossing fan you will love these so my bunting i have used a heat transfer paper and transferred on some images that link to animal crossing there are i think there were five flags if i remember correctly <laughs> um five different flags and for some of them i used an applique method and attached um what did i put on there one of the fossils that was on there and i think the other one was a leaf but i can't remember <laughs> Um, but the picture should be up in front of my face to show you what I am talking about. I also made the drawstring bag as I mentioned and this time I made it in a light brown fabric and put a brown star on the front. So it is a bells bag. <laughs> and to top it off I put in some gold coins that I found in the pound shop and they were both very well received. Now as I said at the beginning I have recorded the Bells bag as a tutorial, so I will link that for you when I get that up onto the channel. Now, whilst I had the sewing machine out, I had to finish off the bag that I started last month. And all that meant was stitching down the sides and the bottom to put it together and adding on a handle. So, <laughs> so this is my cross body messenger bag it's got a really nice long handle i've widened the handle a little bit just because i like the thicker strap but you can see that the top folds over there is a zip in the top there is a zip in the front for a pocket i'm not doing a very good job of showing you this am i so zip in the top doesn't help that i've cut my finger today either lined in a really really hot pink and you've all seen this tropical fabric before, you know I love it, you know I've got loads of it. So, lined in a very hot pink. And then if I come down here, you can see I've got the zip in here for a front pocket. And again, lined in hot pink. I do love a bit of pink. So, the idea is that you can open it up, fill it up with your bits and pieces, zip that over, and then that it acts as a flap over the top so it's a little bit easier to prevent people from getting into it um, and then again you've got that extra pocket at the front i finished this off with some rose gold findings that i picked up from claire at beautiful things so i've got the d rings and i've got my swivel clasps and i think it looks rather smashing <laughs> Now, I cannot for the life of me remember where I got the original fabric for. I have since found it in, my friend got me loads in John Lewis. And I found that I'd also ordered a piece from another store. Again, can't remember the name of it because 
I am rubbish like that, but yes. That is my messenger bag, and that is part of the So Beautiful Things Sewing Club over at Beautiful Things. Um, I will link down below for you as I do each month. And each month, you or every other month, I think, is you get a different project to work on. All the videos are produced by Claire in house, and it's just a nice way of building up your skills. So even if you're a beginner, you can start at bronze and work your way up through silver and gold and on to platinum. And the idea is that you learn all these different skills and you can put them all together for something different in the future. So yes, once I'm out of isolation, I think I'm going to get lots of use out of that because it's lovely and bright and I know that I can use it as a little handbag. Now, in order to prevent this from becoming just a sewing podcast, I have made sure that I crack on with some crochet. So I have two finishes to show you. The first crochet piece I have to show you that is finished, I showed you last month. I think I showed you the month before as well. It was actually started back in August and it is the Perfect Pocket Shawl by Sonia Hood over on Ravelry. Now this is for a friend of mine named Annie and I'm using, I've used Starcraft Special Aran in a really lovely plum colour. The colour is slightly washing out a bit because it's quite dark tonight and I've got both lights on so I've even added the tassely bits on the bottom and it's really big and cosy I was worried that it was going to be cold because it's quite a holy fabric when you work up the trellis Um, the pockets are nice and big as well so this is your pocket there are two one on each end let's try and unfold this so that is it in half And the idea is that you can wrap it around you <laughs> wrap it around you and prop your hands into the pocket so let's just stand up shall we nice big pockets and tassels so I'm hoping Annie's going to get lots of wear out of it and it's going to keep her nice and toasty. Now, as I said, with that shawl, I've been using the Starcraft Special Aran. I purchased that from Joanne at the Little Yarn Hut, which is also called All Tangled Up, um, over on Instagram and Facebook. And I went through almost, almost five balls of yarn. I had literally four grams left over after doing the tassels so five is definitely enough to get one of those um shawls made and rather than use the i think it was like 10 mil hook size for it i used an eight mil purely because of my tension it was going to be really really holy <laughs> if i used the 10 mil so i used the eight mil hook um for the whole thing and i think it's come out rather well so yes, that will be heading over to my projects page over on Ravelry so you can get some more information on what I did with the pattern. Now I only have one more finish for this month and it is one that I did yesterday. It has been in progress for quite some time now. You have seen this in its beginning stages. Remember the pink and blue balls that I had? I think June time? Um, Yes, one of them has now become a little monster. So let's show you, shall we? As always, it is in my floral Vivian bag. Again, this is a tutorial from the So Beautiful Things Sewing Club um, called the Vivian bag. I believe it is a gold project, but I can't remember. So don't quote me on that. But as always, links will be down below for you. So, ready? He's rather cute. I'm not quite sure about him myself, um, but I am hoping that my friend's daughter will enjoy playing with him. He is made up in Sheepy's Callista, which I have used for the purple. The pink is the Rico Creative Cotton Aran, and he's well and truly stuffed. <laughs> um, I haven't done the full length of the arms because the arms look really long in a picture. They look really long in the picture. Um, so I didn't want them to be overly big. So I've 
left out 10 rows I believe from the arms so they're a little bit shorter I'm not too sure about what's happened with his feet they look a bit um, lopsided but he does sit up and I haven't quite yet put sent any teeth on him but I think he's quite a happy little chappy so I'm not sure I will put teeth on Um, I'll probably have a look I'll put some on and then have a look to see what I think afterwards but yes I have managed to finish one little monster which means I have one more to go now this pattern is from Simply Crochet magazine Um, I've shown you this before he is by who's the designer for this one Arena Lee so Arena Lee I don't know what year this was I know there's an issue number on here because I've done it before 7576 of Simply Crochet so if you want to make your own little monster Then you'll have to go and find the magazine for that <laughs> he might even be on the website i don't know um but i did find him on ravelry to link him so you'll be able to see all my uh, notes over on my ravelry page there too i may have to make another one it's like having a little devil on your shoulder isn't that you might have to make an angel for the other side <laughs> so the purple colorway is called ultraviolet and the pink is just i think it's just fuchsia which is a rico cotton um, both are in Aran yarn. I've used safety eyes for his eyes and just a little bit of felt and then I used just a random bit of black DK yarn just to sew in to his mouth. So I think he looks rather cute. And with that pattern I have used a 4 mil hook instead of the 2.5 because I went for the um, thicker yarn. Um, I believe he's meant to be made in just DK yarn so you're meant to use a 2.5 anyway back in there with his little brother or his big brother um <laughs> and i will get the other one made up this month too so they can go off as christmas presents so you may not see these again you may just see a picture but hopefully they'll be ready in time for christmas so that is all of my finishes for the month and i have two works in progress just two this one you've seen for the last couple of months and I'm really really happy with the progress I'm making on it. I am now halfway through. So let's just tidy up the frame. And this is my beach cross stitch by Marina Badilnik. Again I've got my beekeeper, my needle keeper there which is by Emily Cross Ceramics. And have we got a right colourway on here? Yeah. Those are pretty true to colours on there, which is quite nice. <laughs> um, so yes, I have been got about halfway through now. You can see that all of the crosses in the top are now complete. So it's time to move on to the bottom. And I'm going to be going where my needle miter is. So I'm going to have to move this over and get cracking for the next quarter. Now, the reason I'm doing it in quarters is because I find it a little bit easier. And then I'm not darting here, there and everywhere across my fabric and I would have to grid it just to make sure that it's right so by doing it in quarters I can work out exactly where I am by following along the top line here or straight down the middle and going from there really but yes that is my beach cross stitch by Marina Medi Marina Marina pardon me <laughs> Marina Badilnik and the pattern is available over on Etsy again I'll put the link down below for you it is a really lovely pattern there are maybe 10 colors in there and they work so lovely together they blend really well and i can't wait to get the beach part finished at the bottom it's now time for my little tale of woe my last whip of the month is the mittens that i started last month from crochet society box one box one now I have been working on these I decided to just do it all in grey instead of changing to the mint colour now I've got one mitten almost finished and I've done it using the 3.5 mil hook that comes with the box but not sure if you can notice but my hand is actually a bit wider 
than the mitten. So if I, I've cut my end and everything and I've joined the top, I did try to join down but actually when I put my hand in I can't get it to meet. So I've got a huge gap around my thumb and it's supposed to come up to here. So that's supposed to sit there, I'm supposed to join here but I can't join it together because it's too small. So I'm going to have to rip it all back and try it in a larger hook size. So I'm going to leave this one as it is for now. I'm going to start the other one and I'm going to use a bigger hook. I'm going to use my trusty old four mil hook because my tension seems to be okay in that. Um, yes, thankfully I do have more of this yarn because I went and bought some from friend from Tenacious, Tenaciously She um, over on the Fibre Lounge d -stash page um, from Louisa Sherwood. So I do have more of the yarn, but it's just a shame I got all the way to the end and it didn't fit. So it's a really quick pattern to work up though. It also doesn't seem to go straight. I have no idea why. Yeah, my tail of woe. I have one mitten. It's too small. So, even though I thought I'd have both mittens finished for this month, I don't. So I will get back to it and hopefully <laughs> you will see both by the end of December. But I've got to pull it all back. Anyway, that has been worked up in West Yorkshire Spinners Bo Peep yarn in Tin Man. And hopefully I've got enough to do both again. Watch this face. <laughs> so that is all of my finishes, all of my whips. It's time to move on to acquisitions. Now, last month I purchased two mystery bundle boxes from Derrimals. And in those boxes, I had quite a selection of yarn. So, after getting those boxes, Claire at Beautiful Things put up a make-along or a crochet-along to do a bobble heart cardigan. So I've bought the pattern. It is by Iron Lamb Bobble Heart Cardigan. And it uses Aran yarn. So... I thought I would use the Aran yarn that came in my Derrimores box, but I need, I think, seven balls of yarn. And I got two balls in my boxes. I may have got a couple more. Um, My friend Emma, I bought a box for her. She got two balls in her box, so that would have made six if I can remember how many I actually got myself. Um, Realising that I might not have enough, I thought I'd go back to Derrimores and get some more. So, whilst I was there, because you can't just buy, what, one ball of yarn, if that's what I needed. So, to go with the rest of the yarn that I have, I'm planning to make blankets with them anyway. Some of the colours were really nice together, and I thought I'd get a couple more to go with them. So, not only did I get four of the punch which matches now i'm sniffing matches the ones that we got in our boxes it is a slightly different dye lot so what i'm planning on doing is using the ones we got originally for the back and front and then using these for the sleeves and then that way it shouldn't be too noticeable we'll see so i've got four of the punch color way and then I picked up, I think this one's called Asta. Nope, this one is Cyan. So it's like a, a very light, it's not really, really light, but the colour in here is washing it out. It is more of a blue colour than the weird green it looks like on the screen. Um, so I've got four of the bluey colour and then I got four in a purple colour. This one is called Asta. Um, so those. And I also picked up eight in grey, 
purely because I know grey goes with everything and that's going to come in handy to go with the other colours that I've got too. So I've got eight in the grey, four in the purple, four in the blue and four in punch. But whilst I was there, I spotted something sparkly. And we all know that I like sparkly things. So I've not used this yarn before. It is West Yorkshire Spinners. It is one of their Christmas colourways. It is a sparkle yarn. And it is called Fairy Lights. So it's one of the Christmassy colourways. You've got reds, blues, whites and greens in there. And they just remind me of Christmas. So I've not used four ply ever. I know this makes really good socks. So I might have to make a pair of socks. I think 2021 is going to be the year I actually make a sock. <laughs> Whether it's crochet or knitting. Because I haven't got any further on the crochet one that I started last month. And I think it's time that I just made socks. But this is super, super pretty. It is four ply, as I've mentioned. It is 75% wool, 25% nylon and 2% polyester. It requires 3.25 needles or a 3.25 hook and you get 400 meters per 100 gram ball so I could just make a really pretty shawl mm. choices <laughs> if you've made anything with these please let me know I just couldn't resist them they're just really pretty so yeah Sparkle. So all of those were from Derrimores, but there are a few other things that I've purchased as well. Quite a few. <laughs> my mum has also been helping me purchase things and help with my craft addiction. <laughs> so she sent me some zippy purses from Amazon, which I just calico fabric with bright colour zips so I've got some in the pink there's some in a blue some in yellow some with green zips some with black zips and the idea is that I can put some vinyl onto there or maybe some hand in plique or embroidery or print them or just do something different with them they're unlined so they're really just very simple purses they could be used for um makeup they could be used for pencils like pencil cases so my mum sent me 20 on the basis that she got one orange uh, one yellow and one green to herself so i think that's a pretty good bargain <laughs> they, they've just come from amazon i'm not really sure where and it comes up with canvas makeup bags um 20 pieces so I'm going to see what I can do with those for Christmas gifts. And they come in a neat bag. Now I said mum was been buying me stuff as well. And I was making all those masks a couple of weeks ago and ran out of elastic. So I now have about a thousand metres of elastic. What happens when we don't need to make masks anymore? <laughs> um, I think we worked out that I could make maybe 300 masks with the amount of elastic that's here. So I best get cracking then, shan't I? Um, yes, thanks, Mum. Not really sure I needed that much, but it won't go to waste, so that's okay, right? <laughs> um, yeah, it's not just going to be used for masks. I will find other make other makes to use it in. Um. But we'll see what comes in the future now there was one box in particular from the crochet society club that i missed out on because i didn't subscribe until afterwards and that is the stay crafty bundle stay home stay crafty bundle now i did buy a bundle from the website but it was slightly different yarn and slightly different colors so somebody put one up for sale on 
the Facebook selling page that there is linked to it and I've managed to pick up another one so that means I have another bag which says stay crafty which I'm going to give to my best friend Emma but it also means I now have the big eight balls of yarn now my plan is to make a hugs and kisses blanket out of them because they're really nice pastel colours so we have a mint and a white a yellow and biscuit or lemon and biscuit I'm not even going to be able to hold these look pink and blue and purple and peach so there are eight balls of yarn they are huge huge balls of yarn I think they're 200 gram balls so I think it's going to be quite a nice blanket <laughs> um yeah so they are just DK really nice pastel DK yarn and they're going to be made up into a hugs and kisses blanket and I'm not sure when but it is on my list of things to do and that pattern has been on my list for ages so I think it's time to work one up now there is a Facebook page linked to the crochet society club page and that is where people sell off items that they're not necessarily keen on from the boxes so if you're not able to get boxes sometimes that's a really nice place to go if you're just after little bits um, sometimes whole boxes do crop up like that one obviously I don't have the box that it came in but it's just a box so I do have but I do have the yarn and that is the main thing that I wanted from that box so I'm really looking forward to working with it and making up a really really pretty blanket now the last thing that I purchased is my monthly subscription to the skein club over at Vicky Brown's designs and this month goes from the lovely green that we had last month into a bluey almost almost bordering on it's like a periwinkle blue uh, which is a really nice colorway and i think that means i've gone full circle in the colors so these are going to become a i think it's confetti blanket confetti ripple or something i will find the proper details and when i start it i'll give you all the info then but yes these are going to be a blanket is by jelly bean junction so i have managed to find that um so i've purchased that pattern and i will be cracking on with these then um starting with the first month i got which was july or was it june i think i purchased the june as a back as an extra one so originally i started from july um anyway yes that is going to work up into a really really nice blanket it's kind of like a granny stripe style um but the way in which I don't even know how it's stitched to be honest because it confuses me just from looking at the picture so I'm going to have to have a read of the pattern but yes they are going to be a really really beautiful rainbow blanket and I cannot wait because I've seen some really really lovely examples of it and I just have to make one so I look forward to showing you that too another piece that I'm wanting to work on this month is a blanket it is by Deramores. It is a stitch along or a crochet along by Deramores. It uses red and white yarn um, in Aran, and each week you get a different section of the pattern. So there are five five weeks to go. I think this is week up to week three. Week four was published at the weekend, I think. So I need to get part four and then part five. But in the meantime, I actually need some yarn, don't I? I was going to order some and then I thought better of it because I know that I can support Joanne at the Little Yarn Hut all tangled up um, and get some yarn from her so that's what I'm going to do as soon as I'm out <laughs> and free from isolation and then that will be straight on my hooks because it's just really cool <laughs> and perfect for this time of year now it also means that I get to learn something different because I've not done any of this sort of patterning before with two different yarns so I'm really looking forward to cracking on with that and I might not finish it for Christmas but I don't care um, I just want to make it up so that I've got it every year for Christmas now I don't usually show you things that I've been making to sell but 
as it is nearly Christmas, I thought these might be quite nice as gifts for any of your yarny friends out there. These are mainly linked to crochet. Um, you've seen my t-shirts that I wear a lot of with my crochet um, print on them. My husband has managed to print up some big drawstring bags for me. They're kind of like sacks. So I have four. I have one with the blue heart. So it's just very standard and pull it nice and tight to the top. So I reckon you could probably get 10 bolts of yarn in there. Um, so that would be a really nice gift for Christmas. So I've got one in the blue. And then I have three in red. So I'm not going to show you all of them because I was saying I have three in the red. So I have I think they'd be quite nice as gifts if you just filled them up with crochet related stuff or yarn um, just for your yarny friends. They'd be quite nice for Christmas or any time of year to be honest but there's no time at the present. So they will be going into onto my Facebook page. I am in the process of trying to sort out the shop because it doesn't really work properly um, but yes they will be going up shortly so if you want one please head over there and I'll see you. <laughs> The very last thing I'm going to talk to you today is about Vlogmas. I've not done it before and I don't plan on doing it every single day of the month, mainly because we're out of lockdown tomorrow and there's no craft fair this year. So um, what I have, what, what I have, <laughs> what I have got is the Crochet Society Advent Calendar. It's the first time I've done it this year. It is huge and I mean the box was enormous that it came in. Now I didn't buy it direct from Crochet Society because I was umming and ahhing and I didn't quite have the money. Um, but one did pop up on the selling page and I snapped it up. So I have the Crochet Society advent calendar to go through. I also have a Yarny advent calendar from Siobhan's Crafts over on Instagram, which I am dying to open because it's all linked around gemstones and I think it's going to be really really pretty so I'm going to record me opening each of these every day of the week and then what I will do is put them all together and once a week I will pop them up onto the channel for you as well as over on Instagram and you'll be able to see what I am getting in my advent calendar this year and maybe inspire you to get one yourself for next year. It's not the first time I've ever had a Yarny advent calendar. I have had one from All Wool that ends wool for the last three years, but I thought I'd have a bit of a change this year and go for something different and support another small business um, for another small um, indie dyer. And I'm really looking forward to opening it up this year. I still have one whole advent calendar that I haven't used yet. And that was not last year, that was 2018's calendar. and I still don't know what to do with it. I want to put it into an item of clothing, but I want to knit it, which means I need to practice my knitting first and I because I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> so I've brought loads of yarn to practice with my knitting and we'll soon see in the new year what I managed to get up to with that. <laughs> so yes, once a week I will post up the I think I'll probably do it every five days. So in blocks of five, um, so one will go up on the 5th, one will potentially go up on the 10th, but that is my birthday, so I'm not sure what is going to happen, whether I'll actually find the time. Um, again on the 15th, the 20th, and then hopefully the last one will go up on the 25th. If it doesn't go up on the 25th, because it's Christmas, um, I should get it up to you for the 26th, so Boxing Day. And... I'm really looking forward to it. It's my first time doing Vlogmas and I'm a little bit excited. So I believe that's all I have for you this month. Yeah, not an awful lot has happened. I've been at work up until last weekend and yeah, my isolation period means that I've been doing loads of crochet. I've obviously got loads of sewing done last week and I'm just looking forward to seeing what else I can get complete for the rest of this week. So I will see you all again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.